Now joining us live in the studio to discuss this issue is Dr. Tuyu Meba Wondu, a health public health expert. Thank you for joining us this morning, Doctor. Thank you for having me. Now we have the coronavirus in China, Lassa fever in Nigeria. Are we at risk? Of course, obviously we, we are at risk. Um, the first point of spread of any epidemic is what they call a zoonotic spark. The spark happens when the virus jumps from either a domesticated animal or a wild animal to a human being. When this virus jumps, then the virus seeks human to transmit the virus from one person to other. You see what the coronavirus is, has done? Um, started somewhere in China and is now already in uh, how many countries? About nine countries already. So, and it's spreading, killing people. Now, it's not so different also with Lassa fever. The virus jumped from rats, bu bush rat, into human, mm. and then used human to transmit itself from one person to another. Now, the, the, we're going to have more germs jumping from wild to human being. We're going to see that happening often. But the question is that what we should do is that we need to up our surveillance, we need to up our response, we need to actually be on top of public health and epidemiology if you really want to resolve this. And there, there's a collaboration is needed between both the Greek um, urban settlement and food preservation and all and the medical people to ensure that they curtail the spread of any epidemic. Okay. Now, we seem to experience Lassa fever every year, um, which is which is endemic. And, and Lassa is a, is, is, is a local in, in Borno state. How come we've not been able to root out the cause of Lassa fever? Again, we, you see, we, we ha it's endemic in Nigeria. Yes. It smolders. And then at a point in time, when the season is dry, we see a spike of the virus. Now, the thing that our response has been what I would call, um, you know, uh, emergency kind of operations. You know, we, we tend to be combative in responding to some of these things. We, what we should be doing actually is to be proactive. We need to sit down, look at the environment, look at the culture of storing food, look at how people interact with the jungle. Because as the human settlement increases and we need to come in contact with these animals, invariably we're going to see a jump of those germs who, which might have mutated yeah. from animals to human. And when that happens, the germ also use human to transmit. So what we should do is actually the surveillance should be not just at the level of the human being, because most yes. of these last have announces themselves, announce themselves in medical setting. Yes. But we should be doing surveillance even in animals. We should be able to engage the forestry, pick some of these rats, pick some of these animal, and screen them for some of these diseases, some of these routine viruses that can cause diseases in humans, and be able to look at what we need to do. In fact, for us, if we need to do something really meaningful, we need to go to those jungle okay. and be able to deal with those virus inside the animal before they jump to human being. Do, do we have enough medical personnel? I mean, the manpower, the equipment, the know-how, because it seems to be spreading fast, and we have cases of reported deaths in, in a few states already. The, the, the challenge of low, low and uh, middle income country is huge. Huge in the sense that, one, if you, need, if you want to deal with epidemics of sorts, you need, one, human resources, you need fund. The human resources, you mobilize epidemiologists, you mobilize people that are going to do campaign, you, you mobilize medical personnel. But look at the case of Nigeria, for instance. Um, Nigeria, since we've been training doctors, we barely have 50,000 doctors working in Nigeria. Okay, we have a doctor example, one doctor to 3,500, according to the latest report. Mm -hmm. But I tell you, it's even lower than it's even lower, 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 lower than that. If you're looking at, at epidemiologists, we have virtually none. Look at the lab in Nigeria. We have just about three labs to cater for 200 million people to detect these viruses. So again, we are not making the right investment in human resources to combat this health challenge. Okay. If you don't make enough investment in human resources, then what are you going to expect? The thing will come and will smolder and increase. Then secondly, you are not even mobilizing fund. If I have been proposing the setting up of a fund for emergency epidemic preparedness, I mean, there must be a fund, a ready-made fund that can tackle any epidemic that raises its head. Yeah. And there, there are too many in Nigeria, from meningitis to Lassa fever to cholera, the other time we saw Ebola. We don't know what is coming next. 
So there, we, it's not that we have to, the thing will not happen now, we have to be running around and see how do we resolve this. Then the, at the personal level, we need to go to the local community and discuss extensively your personal hygiene. It's still your personal hygiene, what, the, what else do you have? to deal with epidemic. You see your personal hygiene, yeah. first and foremost. If you look at our urban cities, they're extremely dirty. If you can't run a dirty environment and not expect epidemics. If you, if you walk outside of your studio, you will see rats, you know, doing uh, race all over, mm -hmm. uh, all around the gutters. You can't have that kind of thing. And then you see animals all the feasting in dustbin. You see um, hens there, cats there, um, pig there, right. rodents will be there. Okay. Invariably, they'll pick jam and yeah. bring it to the house. All right, Let, let's talk about coronavirus for a moment. It, it dates as back as the 80s, but as at now, what do we know of it as, a, as it's obtainable now? Very little. Okay. It, you know, it, 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 before, tw before the 21st century, yes. um, we've not had only the, be the best, the worst you could have with, vi with those coronaviruses actually, maybe some little cold, you know, that's not really fatal. Yeah. But since the uh, uh, 21st century, we've had, this is the third serious case we've had. We had SARS, which is uh, uh, the, the, the first virus that came out from China. We've had Middle East, yeah, Middle East uh, Respiratory Symptoms uh, Syndrome, yeah. you know, another virus. This latest one is this coronavirus. Now, the thing is that, like I mentioned earlier, this one also jumped from some animal in a market somewhere in Wuhan, in China, to human being, yeah. and the spread is very, very challenging. So uh, already we're, we're, we've seen as much as 60-something deaths yeah. from the virus. Now, the thing is that we don't even know, because we know little about this virus, we don't know, is this virus infective even before, is it possible for someone to have the virus and be asymptomatic and still infect other people? We, d we don't know that yet, that that's an issue. Then the second thing is that, how do we, why is the virus affecting men mainly, mainly and leaving out children and mm -hmm. women? This, there are a lot of questions to find out. But again, the best we can do as far as the virus is concerned is to, of course, our port health services, inbound and outbound people, you know, you have to look at them. We have to embrace that uh, campaign for personal hygiene. You have to embrace campaign for uh, surveillance. We have to uh, embrace campaign to ensure that uh, we, we wash our hand and ensure people do what is right to protect their health. Okay. Uh, that would not only de uh, solve the problem of uh, coronavirus, also solve the problem of a lot of disease in this environment. Now, the Lagos State Government and Nigeria Center for Disease Control have both issued statement that we are now, we know we are safe. How safe are we? What do we listen, need to listen. do to be safe? Ark, let's, let's leave that statement alone. You know, you see, the only thing you can be safe, honestly. You see, let's leave statement alone because yeah. we, you cannot Are, are there safety measures we can you know, put in place? The safety measure for the is coronavirus. It's just yeah. to keep signaling, keep talking, keep ensuring that people... You, you, seem to di you seem to differ on the statement they put out that we... Of course, why wouldn't I differ? Because, yeah. wait a minute, you're saying we're safe. Yeah. You don't have facility to screen for coronavirus. You don't have requisite human resources. You've not mobilized money. Even at your, your, your ports are very porous everywhere. So we see a lot of people moving here and there. What safety do you, what safety are you talking about? Now let's, we should, we should get serious. It's not just by issuing statements. Now, because number one, even if coronavirus is in Nigeria now, how do we detect it? Even though the last time that has been with us for more than 50 years, we just have three laboratories to, to check it out in the whole of the country. What safety are you talking about? So again, don't, people, my counsel is this. Take charge of your health. Don't wait for anybody announcing to you that you are safe. In what way? Let them tell you how you are safe. Even ordinary, ordinary pneumonia, ordinary little yeah. sickness, or even vaccination in Nigeria, we have a big gap. Malnutrition is there. We are, you know, poverty is everywhere. And what is, what is the best for, for, for disease to spread more than pervasive poverty? So, I mean, I don't know what they mean by safe. They, they may have to clarify that. I don't, okay. I don't really We, we do that. have a, a good number of Chinese people who live within the country, and the, the lunar celebration was uh, it's one of their biggest celebrations. And most of them will have gone, and some of them will be coming back into the country. Do you think at this point that the, the, the federal government should put a restriction ban on travels from those countries where this coronavirus seems to have originated from? Restriction ban is not the, 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 the solution. What we need to do is that we need to 
interact, cooperate with the Chinese government, you know, and see that even at the exit point where those people are coming back to Nigeria, you know, they have certification that they've been screened and free yeah. from that virus. Yes. And then at our own point here, we also do our checks. Of course, the common thing we do now is to look at the temperature, the thermal, to do the you know, digital thermal temperature of the person. That's okay, your temperature is, is, is beyond certain limit. Move to this side. Let's check you further. Okay, of course, we know that in this part of the world, and even driving through traffic can give you temperature. So that's, it may not be, you know, a very effective thing. But again, we need to cooperate because we don't have the skill to do a lot. We need to cooperate with the Chinese and then, you know, ensure that they screen them up there and we also do our own screening here. So uh, with that, we can, with that uh, cooperation and WHO, we can achieve a lot. In the we have a community of Chinese people here in Nigeria. How do we deal with that? Again, um, what we've seen is that we've seen this epicenter of the disease, yeah. which is at Wuhan. Wuhan yes. Okay. If the Chinese people, if, um, most of them travel home, while coming back, what we can do, what I've just mentioned earlier. But even right here, there are a lot of things we need to keep the surveillance up. There are a lot of diseases. So what we do is that for every health system, every health system, any fever, because you know malaria is so common, by the time you treat malaria, 48 hours, you're not seeing improvement, you need to be careful. Yes. Secondly, uh, hospitals and private and public must embrace the high standard of universal protection, okay? By wearing their gloves, by wearing their mask, by ensuring that you know, you know, there's a place for hand washing before you enter the service, the uh, hospital, and before you exit. We, I think the standard we set during the Ebola crisis should be maintained. Okay. We should go back. It's not just when, uh, when diseases come or when epidemics is starting not at face, that's when we now go back and start doing this thing. It should be a norm. It should be part and parcel of our, of our system to ensure that we protect the people coming and going out. And then at the level of the medical people, because you now see that at least a medical person that died from, last, from, the, last, from the last fever. Last fever so yeah. we need to embrace those universal protection. It is stated there, it is clear to us. And we need to insist on it because at the end of the day, you don't want your CMD to be telling you that there's no glove, there's no this thing. If it's out of stock, then also hand yourself off. All right. From Dr. Two, you remember, I want to thank you very much for joining us and for your in-depth contribution on News on the Hour. Thank you.